In this video, we talk about the functional aspect of the hardware used in embedded system. Components of embedded system. Embedded system are combination of hardware and software. Components required to make embedded systems. Hardware provides basic computing resources, processor, memory, system buses and IO modules. Operating system controls and coordinates the use of the hardware among the various application programs for the various users. Application programs define the way in which the system resources are used to solve the computing problem of the users. Compilers, database, games, business programs. Device driver enables software programs talk to hardware. Embedded systems are growing in complexity. For example, in case of automotive electronics, the chess system has lot of subsystems which monitors various parameters and are actively controlled. ABS, anti-breaking system, TCS, traction control systems, EBD, electronic brake distribution, ESP, electronic stability program. Another example of growing complexity in embedded system. Digital cameras are single function, always a digital camera, tightly constrained, low cost, low power, small, fast, reactive and real time, only to a small extent, analog components, sensors, CCD, charge coupled device, is a special sensor that captures an image, then the image is converted to digital form for processing. Digital components, processor, coprocessor, memories, controllers, buses, ASIC, application specific integrated circuits, a chip designed for specific application. Converters, analog to digital, digital to analog, analog to digital converter to convert the image data in analog form into the digital form for processing. Software, application programs, exception handlers. An exception is when the program encounters something wrong, like dividing a number by zero or trying to index outside the bounds of an array, etc. They are called exception. Method implement to resolve the exception is called exception handler either by resetting the device or displaying message to the user. Interaction with hardware The nature of embedded system is such that computer will need to interact with the outside world using peripheral devices. A device driver simplifies programming by acting as a translator between the hardware and the application user code. Driver interaction with the peripherals require the program to be able to address the peripheral hardware interface devices. Example, keypad interfacing with 74165 shift registers. A four digit seven segment display using a MC14499. 68HC 68T1 real-time clock. These peripheral interface chips will have addressable location for reading, writing control, status, data. Interface chips may generate interrupts for the processor indicating that certain operation have taken place or an error condition has arise. Microprocessors are classified as GPP, General Purpose Processor, ASP, Application Specific Processor. General Purpose Processors are designed to execute multiple applications and perform multiple tasks. General Purpose Processors can be quite expensive especially for small devices that are designed to perform special tasks. Also, General Purpose Processors might lack high performance that a certain task required. 
Therefore, application-specific processor emerged as a solution for high-performance and cost-effective processor. Application-specific processor have become a part of our lives and can be found almost in every device we use on a daily basis. Devices such as TVs, cell phones and GPS, they all have a form of application specific processor. An application specific processor combines high performance, low cost and low power consumption. Application specific processors are three categories. DSP, Digital Signal Processor, is a special design processor to handle signals rather than data. Processing signals, whether audio or video, is much more complex than processing digital signals. To process audio and video signals, the hardware and software needs to perform an operation called filtering in which unwanted frequencies are removed. Example, FIR filter or FFT filter. In signal processing, another important task is to convert the signal in frequency domain. Analyzing a signal in frequency domain requires intensive mathematical computation, which general purpose processor takes a lot of time to carry out. The DSP carries out such mathematical computations quickly using a special module called MAC, Multiplier and Accumulator. Applications that DSP are sound and music synthesis, modem functions, audio and video compression, speech synthesis and decompression, speech recognition, video signal processing, 2D and 3D graphics acceleration. Examples are Texas Instruments TMS 320 series. Example TMS 320C40, TMS 320C50. Application Specific Integrated Circuit ASIC. Algorithm completely in implemented in hardware. Compared to GPP, ASIC based systems offer better performance and power consumption at the cost of flexibility and extensibility. Although it is difficult to use the ASIC for more other than what they were designed for, but it is possible to use GPP to perform the more general, less demanding task in addition to ASIC in the same system. Application Specific Instruction Set Processor ASIP Programmable microprocessors where hardware and instruction set are designed together for one special application. An ASIP is basically a compromise between two extremes. Application Specific Integrated Circuit Processor ASIC being designed to do mostly a very specific job with high performance but with minimal room for modifications and general purpose processor which costs a lot more than ASIP but with extreme flexibility at what they do. Due to this Flexibility and low price ASIP are great to be used in embedded system and system on chip solution. The term application in ASIP is not necessarily related to software application. It actually describes the class of task that ASIP platform was designed to efficiently accomplish. Let's look at microprocessor. Central processing unit, CPU. CPU is the brain of the computer system. Administrates all activities in the system. 
and performs all operations on data. It continuously performs two operations, fetching and executing instructions. It understands and executes instruction based on a set of binary codes called the instruction set. Machine cycle to get an instruction set. The processor must perform following operations. Fetch the instruction from memory. Decode the instruction. Execute the instruction. Store the result back in memory. These four steps refer to machine cycle. Generally, one machine cycle equal to X clock cycles, where X depends on the particular instruction being executed. Shorter the clock cycle, lesser the time it takes to accomplish one machine cycle. So instructions are executed faster. Hence, faster the processor. Fetching and executing an instruction involves following steps. Contents of PC are placed on the address bus. Read signal is activated. Data, instruction opcode are read from RAM and placed on data bus. Opcode is latched onto the CPU's internal instruction register. PC is incremented to prepare for the next fetch from memory. While instruction involves decoding the opcode and generating control signals to gate internal registers in and out of the ALU and to signal the ALU block diagram of microprocessor. The buses, address, data and control. A bus is a collection of wires carrying information. For each read or write operation, the CPU specifies the location of the data or instruction by placing an address on the address bus. Then activates a signal on the control bus indicating whether the operation is read or write. Read operations. Retrieve a byte of data from memory at the location specified and place it on the data bus. CPU data bus reads the data and place it in one of its internal registers. Write operations put data from CPU on the data bus and store it in the location specified. Address bus carries the address of a specified location. For n address lines, 2n locations can be accessed. For example, a 16-bit address bus can access 2 to the power of 16 equals to 65536 locations or 64k locations. Data bus carries information between the CPU and memory or between the CPU and I.O. device. Control bus carries control signals supplied by the CPU to synchronize the movement of information on the address and data bus. Classification of microprocessor. First, based on memory connection, von Neumann and Harvard. Based on instruction set supplied, in short, ISA. Complex instruction set computer, CISC, CISC. Reduced instruction set computer, RISC, RISC. Von Neumann architecture developed by John Von Neumann, most widely used architecture implemented in majority of the processor. All elements in the systems are controlled by single bunch of three buses, address bus, data bus, and control bus. Microcontrollers based on the Von Neumann architecture have a single data bus that is used to fetch both instructions and data. Program instructions and 
data are stored in a common main memory. When such a controller address main memory, it first fetches an instruction and then it fetches the data to support the instruction. Two separate fetches slow up the controller's operation. Example, an instruction read a byte from memory and store it in the accumulator as follows. Cycle 1, read instruction. In cycle 2, read data out of RAM and put data into accumulator. The one human architecture's main advantage is that it simplifies the microcontroller design because only one memory is accessed. In microcontrollers, the contents of RAM can be used for data storage and program instruction storage. For example, Motorola 68HC11 microcontroller is one human architecture. Harvard Architecture Developed at Harvard University uses two different bus systems to transport data bus and instruction bus. Instruction fetched from the program memory. Program memory has its own address, data and control bus. Data to CPU from peripheral or memory to CPU Data bus has its own address, data and control bus. This allows execution to occur in parallel. As an instruction is being prefetched, the current instruction is executing on the data bus. Once the current instruction is complete, the next instruction is ready to go. This prefetch theoretically allows for much faster execution than one human architecture on the expense of complexity. The Harvard architecture executes instructions in fewer instruction cycle than the one human architecture. For example, Intel MC S51 family of microcontrollers and PIC microcontrollers uses Harvard architecture. The same instruction as shown under one human architecture would be executed as follows. Cycle 1, complete previous instruction, read the move data to accumulator instruction. Execute move data to accumulator instruction, read next instruction. Hence, each instruction is effectively executed in one instruction cycle. Connection of peripherals Every external device needs some glue logic to interface with processor. As 16-bit processors have become obsolete and replaced with 32-bit and 64-bit in general use. Reserving range of memory address space for I.O. is less of a problem as the memory address space of the processor is usually much larger than the required space for all memory and I.O. devices in a system. Therefore, it has become more frequently practical to take advantage of the benefits of memory mapped I.O. However, even with address space being no longer a major concern, neither I.O. mapping method is universally superior to the other and there will be case where using port mapped I.O. is still preferable. The difference between the two schemes occur within microprocessor. Intel has for the most part used the port map scheme for their microprocessor and Motorola has used the memory map scheme. Memory mapped I.O. I.O. devices are mapped into the system memory map 
along with RAM and ROM. Memory map I.O. uses the same address bus A0 to A15 to address both memory and I.O. devices. The CPU instructions used to access the are also used for accessing devices. In order to accommodate the I.O. devices, areas of CPU's addressable space must be reserved for I.O. rather than memory. CPU's address space 8000 reserved for I.O. Each I.O. device monitors the CPU's address bus and responds to any CPU's access of device assigned address space, connecting the data bus to a desirable device's hardware register. Advantage is that every instruction which can access memory can be used to manipulate an I.O. device. But it's a disadvantage. You use physical memory address space for your memory mapped I.O. devices. For example, 32-bit windows not being able to access all 4 GB of RAM on a PC as some space is reserved for I.O. Second, the entire address bus must be fully decoded for every device. For example, a machine with a 30 address bus would require logic gates to resolve the state of all the address lines to properly decode the specific address of any device. This increased cost of adding hardware to the machine. Example CPUs ARM, PAPI, 68M68K, Intel x86. Port mapped I.O. I.O. devices are mapped into a separate address space. This is usually accomplished by having a different set of signal lines to indicate a memory access versus port access. The address lines are usually shared between the two address space, but less of them are used for accessing ports. An example of this is the standard PC which uses 16 bits of port address space but 32 bits of memory address space. The advantage to this system is that less logic is needed to decode a discrete address and therefore less cost to add hardware devices to a machine. On the older PC compatible machines only 10 bits of address space were decoded for IO ports and so there were only 1024 unique port locations modern pc decode all 16 address lines to read or write from a hardware device special port IO instructions are used the in and out instructions which can read and write a single byte to an I.O. device. From a software perspective, this is a slight disadvantage because more instructions are required to accomplish the same task. For instance, if we wanted to test one bit on a memory mapped port, there is a single instruction to test a bit in memory but for port we must read the data into a register then test the bit the table summarizes difference between memory mapped and port mapped io in memory mapped io same address bus to address memory and io devices whereas in Port mapped I.O. different address for memory and I.O. device. In memory mapped I.O. access to the I.O. devices using regular instructions. Whereas in port mapped I.O. uses a special class of CPU instruction to access 
I.O. devices in and out. Memory map I.O. are most widely used I.O. methods whereas in port map I.O. used in x86 Intel microprocessors in large.